A good user experience when filling out forms is to visually indicate to the user if a form field is invalid as and when they enter the details. In this video, let's take a look at validating some of the form fields and applying an appropriate class to visually indicate to the user when the form is invalid. Now there are two approaches. You can either create your own class with the necessary styles that has to be applied to the form control, or you can use the validation classes that your CSS framework provides. I am going to use a class is invalid, which Bootstrap 4 provides. But we have to make sure we apply that class conditionally. That is, only when the form control is invalid. So let's begin with the name form control. The class Bootstrap 4 provides for invalid state is is invalid. When I apply this, you can see a red border on the form control. Now this is sufficient visual feedback for the demo. But we must ensure that the class is applied only when the form control is invalid. And for that, we make use of the ng model properties coupled with class binding. Class binding, so begin with square brackets class followed by a dot followed by the class name that has to be conditionally applied is invalid. Now this has to be applied only when the form control is invalid. So we use the reference variable to ng model that is name and then check the invalid property. So name dot invalid. This in English reads out Apply the class is invalid when the name form control is invalid. Let me remove the class over here. And if you take a look at the browser, you can see that we don't have the red border on page load. If I clear out the name, the border gets applied. So our visual feedback is working as expected. However, there is room for improvement. Let's say we have a form that is not pre-filled with data. For example, name is not filled in the form and is empty to begin with. So let me go back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to remove this name dot valid. Go back to app.component.ts and leave the name empty. Now, if I go back to the browser, you can see the red border. There is no mistake, the form field is in fact invalid. But imagine 10 such form fields that are read on page load without any user interaction. Kind of looks bad and something we want to avoid. So in addition to checking if the form control is invalid, we also check if the user has visited that form control. Back in the HTML, in the class binding, we also check if the form control has been touched. So and name dot touched. Let me break it down into a couple of lines. So apply the class is invalid if the name form control is invalid and it has been touched. Now if you take a look at the browser on page load, the name form field doesn't have a red border. If I click inside and navigate away though, you can see the red border. This is pretty good from a UX point of view. Now on similar lines, let's take a look at pattern matching validation. You can basically add any regular expression you want to and create a pattern that your form field must satisfy. For example, a password must be 8 to 15 characters with at least one special character, a pin code in a specific format, a phone number in a specific format, the possibilities are endless. For our example, let's keep it simple and make sure the phone number is 10 digits. So go back to Visual Studio Code and the first step, 
get a reference to the ng model directive. So pound phone is equal to ng model. Second step, add the pattern attribute with the regular expression. Now this is definitely not a phone number format validation. We are just validating to make sure it is 10 digits. Finally, let's bind the invalid class. Square brackets, class followed by a dot followed by is invalid, which is the class we want to conditionally apply. And what is the condition? Phone form control should be invalid and it has to be touched. Save the file and let's take a look at the browser. I'm going to remove a couple of digits in the form field and then tab out. You can see that the red border is applied. If we enter 10 digits though, it disappears. So the pattern validation is working as expected. Now this is pretty much the idea behind field validation in template driven forms. Using the ng model properties and class binding, conditionally apply a class that visually indicates the invalid state. So right now we are providing a visual feedback to the user that something is wrong with the form field. However, that is not enough. It could quite easily leave the user frustrated if they are not sure what has to be done to correct the error. So whenever a form field is invalid, it is essential that we display an appropriate error message. Let's take a look at that in the next video.